friends the aim of this video is to encourage you to do fecal emulsification in hypermature morganian cataracts nucleus management in hypermature morganian cataracts is a bit tricky because there is no epinuclear support the nucleus moves freely it's a free floating nucleus and it's a bit challenging to chop these kind of nucleus but after watching this video you will get some confidence you will get some tips to manage such cases at this time capsular axis is being done and let's see what happens as i go at five o'clock there's a fibrous tissue there and i cannot go in that direction so what my plan is now to pull it centrally to avoid this fibrous black and then again i go towards the periphery to make the rexis of adequate size yes now the rexis is becoming adequate that's it so rexis is done now what to do with this nucleus the main thing is you have to use high vacuum and hold this nucleus very firmly and then chop it but before that in this case i have used a ctr because i thought genuine may give way at some place and to support the nucleus to support the capsular bag i am applying this CTR this capsular tension ring this is a sinski hook which is being used to place the CTR in the capsular bag and now i will be very confident in managing the nucleus because the bag is nicely supported now now see how i hold the nucleus with high vacuum holding the nucleus with high vacuum and trying to chop this nucleus but no it's not in the right place to hold i have to hold it at the center let us see how i can hold it go from periphery and bury the tip into the substance of the nucleus yes now it will be possible to chop this yes so the tip has to be nicely buried at the center of the nucleus and then you can chop it very easily if the hold is superficial it is not at all easy to chop this kind of nucleus and now once the nucleus has been divided into some pieces is fragment is then worked on with ultrasonic energy and it is emulsified and now this is the last fragment i'm keeping an eye on the posterior capsule if the posterior capsule tends to come to the tip of the phaco handpiece we must be very cautious we can use iwell scaffold for the last piece if it so happens but in this case there was 
the poster capsule was quite far and I emulsified the last piece of nucleus removing the chopper from the side port because if I remove the chopper there is no leakage through the side port and the poster capsule goes towards the vitreous cavity. So the nucleus has been nicely managed and now whatever little cortical matter is there should be nicely removed. I am using this 23 gauze Simco cannula to remove the cortical matter. So the main tip that you are getting from this nucleus management is hold the nucleus very firmly uh, right at the center of the nucleus. You can go from periphery just in front of the main incision and gradually go bury the tip of the phaco handpiece into the substance of the nucleus hold the nucleus very firmly at the center and then chop it. And at this moment little bit, little bit polishing of the poster capsule is being done. We can see some white dots on the posterior capsule. Those are actually fibrous plugs. Now after injecting viscoelastic substance, this is a hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lens from Abbott. This is sensor single piece intraocular lens. Yes. So the lens is nicely placed in the capsular bag. Now once we have used viscoelastic substance for implantation of intraocular lens, we must be very thorough in removing the viscoelastic substance. First I use Simco cannula, flush the viscoelastic substance out from the antechamber and from the capsular bag. Then I use this irrigating probe of bimanual IA and then irrigation and aspiration together for uh, removing the viscoelastic substance. By this time the people has become small because of iris touch by the irrigation aspiration probes. And now little bit of moxifloxacin has been injected into the antechamber. The side ports are hydrated nicely and then a final lavage of the antechamber is done and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills.